Okay, so we're going to talk about 9.2. We're going to do 9.2. As you said before, this is not hospital's rule. This is L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule is tells us how to figure out limits when we have something that looks like this. So I'm going to limit when x goes to a, what happens to f of x and g of, g of x over f of x. If g of a and f of a both go to zero, you end up with a form where you're going to get zero over zero, and we do not know how to do that. We cannot do that. Okay. So this is strictly for when you're going to end up, this is going to be a zero over zero form. Okay. There are several different forms for L'Hopital's rule, but we're going to go ahead and do the first case first, and that is when they both go to zero. The top and bottom goes to zero. So let's jump right in and see. Let's see what happens. So let's go do example number one. We'll run example number one. Example number one says, Find limits as x approaches 0, x over 1 plus x minus 1. Okay? So, if I put 0 on the top, I get square root of 1 minus 1, which goes to 0. If I put 0 on the bottom, I also get 0. So, this is definitely a 0 over 0 form. Okay, so then what we're going to do here is that we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So we're going to take the derivative of the top and do the derivative of the. So the L'Hopital rule says that I can take the derivative of the, the top and the derivative of the bottom, and that would be the same limit. So the for easy one first. If I take the derivative of the bottom, I get 1. If I take the derivative of the top, I'm going to get 1 half. 1 plus x to the negative 1 half, and the 1 goes away, so this is what I get. So now when I put x equals to 0, I put x equals to 0, what do I get? I get 1 half, 1 to the negative 1 half over 1, 1 half over 1, 1 half. So now I have figured out that the limit of this entire thing is going to be one half. Okay? So this is how the L'Hopital rule works, and this is what it's really its application is for. Okay? So that was that one. So let's move on to example number two. Let's try example number two and see what happens. <coughs> example number two says find the limit when x goes to zero square root of 1 plus x uh, minus 1 minus x over 2 divided by x squared. x squared. So let's first of all verify what happens when I take go to 0. If I go to 0, the bottom is obviously going to go to 0. The top one is going to go to square root of 1 minus 1 minus 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, so the top also is 0. So what do I have to do? It goes to 0, it's a form of 0 over 0, so L'Hopital rules work. L'Hopital rule will work, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top. Now also realize, when you take the derivative, you're not taking the derivative of the entire thing, so you do not have to do the quotient rule here. You're taking the derivative of the top and dividing that by the derivative of the bottom. Okay? The derivative of the top, 1 half, 1 plus x, negative 1 half. That goes to 0. I have that left. That's that. I take the derivative of that, I get that. Okay? 
Let's evaluate what happens now when x goes to zero. When x goes to zero, the bottom I get zero. That's not good. Okay. The top, what do I get? I get one half, one to the negative one half minus one half. This here is one, so I get one half minus one half is zero, which is kind of good because now I get zero over zero again. So the Locatell rule should work again. We call this the strong form, and it's called the strong form because I have to use the Locatell's rule twice. Okay. In other words, I'm going to go ahead and lose the, use the Locatell rule on the result that we got here. So I'm going to take the derivative one more time, limit as x goes to zero. If I take the derivative of the bottom, I get two. If I take the derivative of the top, what do I get? I get this comes down, so it's going to be negative one quarter, one plus x to the negative, like that, that goes away. So this goes to, now if this goes to zero, it still becomes one. I end up with this on the top, that on the bottom. So your answer is going to be that. Okay? So that looks good. And you can use it on the one side of the limits also. I want, you can go ahead and look at example number three. I'm not going to go over example number three, but you can look at that. So let's go ahead and start with different forms of the L'Hopital rule. Okay, so the, the, the L'Hopital rule that we so far looked at was when we put the x when we took the limit, we found that the it was zero over zero. So we're going to do now a form where when I put the zero, when I put the in, I get infinity over infinity. Let's see how that works. So we'll go to example number four. I get example number four. Hmm. Example number four. Limit as x goes to pi over two. What do I get? I have secant x one plus tangent x. So. When x goes to pi over 2, this is what? This is 1 over cosine x. So 1 over <coughs> cosine pi over 2. This guy goes to 0, so it's 1 over 0, which approaches infinity. So this guy goes to infinity. This guy over here goes to infinity also because tangent pi over 2 if you remember correctly, it goes like this. Asymptote at pi over two, it approaches infinity up. So this also goes to infinity. So you have a form of infinity over infinity. So we can use the L'Hopital rule. L'Hopital rule says, so let's go ahead and do take the derivative. Limit as x goes to pi over two. The limit of secant is secant tan. So this is what I'm going to end up getting. The derivative of the bottom, this goes to zero. Tan is secant squared x. So what I'm going to end up with, oh, so that guy and that guy cancels out. Limit as x approaches pi over 2, I get tan x over secant x which is what? Limit as x approaches pi over 2. Tan is sine x over cosine x. Secant x is 1 over cosine x. If I multiply the top and bottom by cosine x, these two go away. I end up with this being limit as x approaches pi over 2. All I have left is sine of x. So, Sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So the limit is actually 1. Okay, so that would be the infinity over infinity one. Okay, let's try one more of those. And example number 5. And example number 5. If 
I am told to evaluate the limit of the 1 over 5. X goes to infinity. And I have natural log of x over 2 root x. Okay? So as x approaches infinity, what happens to this? This is the graph. The graph looks like this. So this is natural y is equal to natural log of x. It just goes to infinity, right? So this one goes to infinity. And this one here goes to infinity also. So we have infinity over infinity. Okay, so it's infinity over infinity, so let's go ahead and take the derivative of both sides, top and bottom. X goes to infinity. If I take the derivative of this, I get 1 over x. If I take the derivative of this, I get what? This is the same, the, the, this is the derivative of 2x to the 1 half. I'm taking the derivative of that, so I get what? 2 and the 1 half cancel out, x to the negative 1 half. So I'm going to get 1 over root x here, okay? If I multiply top and bottom by x, x goes to infinity, I get, if I take, uh, multiply this by x, I get 1, multiply this by x, and then I get root x. So as if x goes to infinity, this guy goes to infinity, so I get 1 over infinity, goes to 0. Okay, so that's example number 5. Okay, we will stop here for this lecture, and we will continue on with example number 6 through 10 in the next lecture. All right.